Okay, before we get into it, instead of an intro, I'm gonna put a disclaimer. I recorded all of this before Hasbro's Fan First Monday Marvel Legends thing today. During that, both Ron and Dwight pronounced it as Shang-Chi, and I had heard that that's how Kevin Feige pronounced it too. But when I did that during the weekly, the consensus in the comments seemed to lean more towards Shang-Chi. I said Shang-Chi through this whole thing. I, I just wanted to get that out of the way before, you know, you get into the review and, uh, oh, it's pronounced Shang-Chi. I'm just looking at toys. That's all I got for you. Get your Marvel Legends and Dark Side toys. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings Marvel Legends wave. I'm just going to say it. Looking at it right off the bat, I realize it's kind of an oddball wave. The Shang-Chi trailer dropped last week. Hasbro capitalized on that by revealing their figures for the movie. That makes total sense to me. There's Sha Ling and Win Wu and Shang-Chi himself, and then hiding back here is Death Dealer. Then there's the comic characters that don't make a lot of sense to be included in here. There is Tony AI Iron Man, then there's Civil Warrior, and then of course there is the Mr. Hyde Build-A-Figure again. I don't know if there's some history between Mr. Hyde and Shang-Chi, but... But throwing on the old armchair product manager hat, I can understand the reuse or well, the very easy reuse for the comic characters when there's so much new sculpting involved with the movie characters. So I'm not going to grab about it too much. I just wanted to point it out before we got into the actual figures. Looking at the packages, it's your standard Marvel Legends fair. It's the big window, the logos, showing the movie, showing everything you get with the figures. The background's kind of just blah. But then for Iron Man, there's blue. So the blue against the blue looks blue. And then Civil Warrior has kind of a yellowish background. Then. On the sides we get an artwork, a very nicely drawn picture, which is what artwork means. Artwork can mean a lot of things, I guess, but we're not going to get into that. Nice visual representations of each character in the wave. On the back, same thing, along with pictures of other characters in the wave. There's little bios for each character. Wu is interesting, where it says, which has lurked in the shadows of the MCU since the very beginning. Ooh. Shang-Chi and Shaolin kind of changes things up by swapping to the other side. Side. Does that mean, oh, bad guys to the left, good guys to the right? But then on the back is, well, it's the same artwork. Small parts, don't put them in your mouth. On the other side, same pictures. On top, come on, on top, there's the Shang-Chi symbol, Iron Man logo, Contest of Champions. On the bottom, more legalese, barcodes, logos, but... Besides doing this wave, we might as well throw in the Target exclusive Marvel Legends Shang-Chi movie, Katie. I was able to pick this up at Target today, so that's always cool. Hey, a Target exclusive that was easy to get. But we are going to start out by looking at Civil Warrior, because we know what we're getting here. It's essentially a figure we already have, just in different colors. Ooh, <laughs> damn. A very striking figure, but again... This is complete reuse of this figure, except for the hands. The Hydra Supreme has these repulsor type hands. Well, that one, this one has a fist and I don't want to take the shield off because I actually didn't break that clip. I don't know how I got it on there. Ooh, don't touch it too hard. This new figure has kind of grip hands. I don't know if these are reused from something else, but they don't have the repulsors in the palms. And this is essentially rehashing a review I already did, but I, I really do like the shape of this figure. There's armor pieces, there's some hard lines, well, and then there's some roundness, hard lines, and then you get down here and there's that Captain America. It's not scale, is it? It's some kind of mesh or something. That comes around on the back too, up and around. So it's a nice mix. It has a very Captain America. You want some Iron Man elements? I don't know how much I like this red shoved into the middle of the silver on the leggings. Yeah, I said leggings. I know it's armor. Shh. But everything's nice and clean. I like the silver against the blue. The red outline to the lighter blue on the star against the darker blue. I like that contrast. The light blue travels down. Almost like these light up or something. Because it's the same shade of blue on the arc reactor on the shield, but we'll get to that. But then there's even yet another color punched in there with this gunmetal of the mouthpiece. I don't guess that's used anywhere else on the body. I like the detail on the back. <laughs> Is that a flux capacitor? Did I already make that joke in the other review? It's got some extra red detail coming down on the front of the forearms too. That's neat. As much as I like that green and yellow, I feel like this blue, silver, red color scheme ties everything together better. Going over articulation, there is a hinge at the top of the neck with the ball going up into the head. Can look up, can look down. Eh, a little bit of tilt. Swivel. 
arm hinges up, swivels all the way around, rotation at the bicep, double elbow, let's see where this goes, not bad range, swivel at the wrist, hinge side to side, hinge at the abs, go forward about that far, arc back, rotation at the waist, hidden nicely by the belt, ball coming out to the hip, goes forward, goes back, out, swivel at the thigh, double knee, oh no, that's as far as it goes, hinge at the ankle, goes way back, pretty nice forward too, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, we get this new arc reactor type shield, and it's always fun to get a new design. But I really like this. The paintwork with the light blue feels like it's glowing a bit. So then there's wear and tear to the red. I'm not sure if this is reused from any other shield, but it feels techy. I was going to say power packs, but that would be the power pack there, wouldn't it? But I do like the peg because you can just put it in the grippy hand. Like I mentioned with the other one, that clip piece has a tendency to break. It's never stopped me from trying it before. The way that tapers in, it's about the right size for that clip to go on. I'm good with that. And the shield never came off again. Civil Warrior stands slightly under six and a half inches tall and works really, really well with other Game of Earth Marvel Legends like the Avengers Captain America or this Iron Man, was that the Avengers game too? I just like the blue. I meant to rhyme that, I did. Or if you wanna fit it onto your comic shelf, here it is with the 80th anniversary Iron Man and Captain America. Next up, let's take a look at the AI Tony Stark Iron Man. Again, mostly because it is almost all reuse. There's some new parts, or new part. Eh, 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 come here. Oh, and it's so classic-y. Well, except for that hologram and that blue color. Other than that, oh, it's so classic-y. Like I mentioned, it is mostly reuse of the 80th Iron Man. But if you remember back to the 80th Iron Man, biceps were backwards on that figure and we had to swap them and then swap the forearms back across. They got it right this time around. There's the two grooves. There's the one on the inside. But, and this isn't really a screw up, but the angles are still backwards. And I think it was the same originally on the 80th Iron Man 2. See how the grooves are going across kind of with the foot? The grooves here are going away while the grooves on the foot are going this way. All you have to do here is rotate the boot around, rotate the foot around, and then bring the foot forward. And you can see the difference. When it's still backwards, it kind of angles to the back. The right way, it comes straight down with the leg. Rotate around, bring the foot down, rotate. You gotta get up pretty early in the morning to fool old Uncle Robo boys. But as much as I liked the shiny gold and the shiny red on it, the metallic look, kind of that Alex Rossi more modern take on a classic design, ooh, the bright yellow and the bright red just takes me back to the original comics. And it is just stark yellow and stark red and stark blue and stark stark. Again, this is a more modern take where he's mentoring Ironheart, so of course that's not classic. And then the blue is a a more modern thing. So if you want a more from back in the day look, you'll have to paint those. I can't get over the colors. I just keep looking at it. There is still a shine to it to make it look a bit metallic, but it is just ugh, comic booky. For the head, we debated about this during the live stream today, and I think this is a new sculpt. The facial features, the eyebrows, the mustache, or well, the goatee, I guess. And it wasn't until I got it out of the package that I realized that there's some slight paint apps here. There's some darker color on the pupils, and on the eyebrows, on the goatee, and I guess the hair a bit. For articulation, that hinge on top looks all the way up. That's cool too. All the way down, so much tilt. Swivel, hinge at the shoulder comes up, rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow comes up to uh, about right there. Swivel, hinge, ab crunch goes forward one click, back about that far. Rotation at the waist, ball at the hip comes forward, mm, not so back. Out, it's a winner so far. Swivel at the thigh, double knee comes up, oh, the boot cuff gets in the way. Rotation at the top of the the boot, hinge at the ankle, again, all the way. Forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories in the package, Tony comes with two fists. Those pull out, and then you can plug in these splayed out hands that are locked in that position, doesn't have a hinge. Notice the holes in the palms, you can plug in these blast effects. And that looks really, really good. Or there's holes in the feet if you wanna use them in a flight pose. But that's not all. You can also pop the head off and you get this Iron Man helmet to go on this head complete the look behind the camera strength. Inside the eyes and the mouth, there is that same baby blue color from here, so it all matches up. It also gives it kind of a glow effect. So good. This Iron Man, well, also stands very slightly under six and a half inches tall, which looks good next to the Hydra Supreme and the 80th anniversary Captain America. Have we gotten this in a more classic lighter blue? Next up, let's take a look at the movie Win Woo. And when I was first looking in the package, I thought, well, there's his weapon, 
But what the hell is this? Is this some kind of... And then I realized, oh, that's Mr. Hyde's cane. You can't get anything past old Uncle Robo. And oh man, as much as the trailer got me hyped for the figures, the figures are getting me excited about the movie because I really like this design. And hell, this is the first one I've broke out of the package. This arm was sticking out at the elbow and I had to heat it up. And you see how easy that moves? That's because I just hit it with some heat. The first thing that catches your eye are the rings on the arm. I guess for the MCU, Instead of being on the fingers, they're going to put the 10 rings up here. Mm, it kind of makes sense. It's, it's a jarring change, but I'm okay with it. If this is indeed the Mandarin, maybe it's a, something else. I don't know. But then for the shirt underneath, it's just black. It has some wrinkles to it until you get up to the pad up on the shoulder. That's where they throw in some blue that ties in with the rest of the top here. There's also a pad sculpted on this side, but it's not painted. I don't know if it was missed or it's black in the movie because of all this blue hanging over it. I don't know. But then that shirt has some padding on the left side, comes around to the collar, a nice basketball texture to it. It makes it more interesting right here. This is what catches my eye. The blue with this shoulder pad looking thing. Geometric shapes that comes up and around to the back. Kind of goes less colorful. That then pops into a grid detail that comes under this hanging around the waisty thingy and travels down to this flap on the front. Then we get past that, it's kind of baggy pants. There's some seam lines to it, a knee pad, wrinkly down to the top of the boots, and I love this design. Do the silver punched in right here just to spice them up a bit? I'm okay with that. Plus it's nicely applied. It comes around to the back, goes down. But this hang down thing has this very intricate tampo on top of it. That is all paint. There's a belt sculpted into that too. This is all one piece hanging around the waist. The belt comes around, has some ornate detail here on this side pad. Then it gets to the 10 ring symbol for the belt buckle. Ooh. And I joked about this in the weekly, but this design really speaks to me as a guy in his early 20s in the mid 90s. You have your combat boots, you have your baggy pants, you have your long sleeve shirt under another shirt, then you have your flannel shirt tied around your waist. When Wu is ready for some fairly safe mosh pits. But then it's the head, the sculpt, the photo reel for the eyebrows, the eyes, the mouth. It is just great. I was going to say something about him looking not too excited to, to be here or something, but maybe he's just very calm and collected in the movie. I haven't watched it. I don't know. But I do have a problem <laughs> with the flannel. It is a traffic cone around the waist. You can get out here and a little here, but it doesn't really allow for a super amount of leg movement and there's not a good place to put any kind of cuts. Going over articulation, there is, oh, there's a dumbbell joint at the top. No, oh, there we go. I didn't realize it would do that. Dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Ball joint down at the bottom under the collar. A little bit. Does go up, down. Yeah, not bad. Not as good as a hinge would, but still not bad. This is where the dumbbell comes into play though. So much tilt. Swivel. Hinge at the shoulder. Oh, what am I doing here? I tore the glue off right there. There does seem to be a peg on that. It does come up to 90. Rotates. You're gonna get to about right there. But as you can see, the <laughs> potential's there. There's just something in the way. Something in the way. Yeah, we're going 90s. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow goes all the way up. Swivel at the wrist and then side to side. Ball joint mid torso gets nice hula hoop action. Talked about the legs that comes out to ball joints. You can get to about right there. Back, not so much. Out, about right there. There is a swivel at the thigh. Oh, double knees. We're going for it. We are going for it. It would kick his ass if you could get around to his ass. Hinge of the ankle goes back. Wow, this whole wave is just ankle-rific. Forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Win Wu comes with two fists, comes with two clawed hands, some kind of fighting stance, and then comes with two grip hands. And those are for holding this. I'm not sure what this is called. I know it has a name. Some blade and there's some poke and then there's some hook. That totally works. Wen Wu stands at six and a quarter inches tall and looks good next to other MCU type characters like the in-game Captain America and then Trevor. Hasbro's been doing fantastic with the MCU stuff for a while but it seems like they're skewing even more realistic lately so the bigger head the more realistic proportions it's gonna look slightly off with some of the older figures. Next up, we'll look at Shaoling. And I'm not sure I'm saying that. During the weekly, people said I was pretty close. Scotch tape, my old enemy. I feel like this could have been a boring design and essentially it is just pants, shoes, and then a shirt with some intricate design work on it. But as an action figure, this thing's kind of kick ass. Like I said, it's just black pants, but it's done so well with the wrinkles coming down and the shape of them. It doesn't look 
action figure-y, but it is an action figure. Does that make sense? Of course you see the joints and stuff, but the way it's all laid out, it feels very natural. It looks very natural. On the shirt, and it's hard to see because it's bright white, but it does have a texture to it like we see with a lot of MCU costumes, uniforms, clothing, and they do it, I guess, to make it more visually interesting, even though it's just, you know, <laughs> big patches of cloth, but it, it works, both in the movies and in action figure form. I'm guessing it's a bit exaggerated that it's not this big and bumpy and obvious in the movie, but that's just what happens when it's scaled down to 112. What catches my eye is the paintwork here. So many tiny lines. There was a lot of room for error here. And just looking at it without my magnifiers or my glasses or anything, it looks very, very clean. I'm sure in the camera with the macro lens, the high resolution, there's probably lines that stop and don't touch or cross over or something. But for what it is, it's done really well. Like right there, off a little bit. Right here, again back here, a little messy right there. But I can't give Hasbro too much grief for it because we've seen paint jobs much easier to do than this, but much more messed up. So. Props to Hasbro for that. Props to Hasbro's factory for that. There is a sleeve sculpted on the forearm. Comes down, that's glued, in, no, it's not glued down in the front. It's just very tight around the waist, but doesn't get in the way of leg. Well, it does kind of hit right there. You also see a slight sheen difference between, I guess those are two different plastics. But up at the head with the skin tone, it's just so soft and realistic. There is a shine now that I'm looking at it in all these lights, but you get it in <laughs> natural lighting. It's very subtle. Straight black for the hair color, but the light bouncing off of it gives you a good idea of the sculpt itself. Photo wheel to the face, just an amazing looking likeness. Same situation with the neck. There's a dumbbell joint with a big old ball on top. Can look up, can look down. I love dumbbell joint tilt. Swivel, arm hinges up past 90, rotates all the way around. That's good range for just a single elbow. Then that rotates. Swivel, hinge, ball joint at the waist. Doesn't go as forward as I like, but arc back. Tilt, tilt, swivel. Ball at the hip goes forward. No back. Out. Not bad. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up. Oh yeah, easy. Hinge at the ankle. Oh, continues that trend all the way back. Forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, she comes with two flat palms. She also comes with two fists. Two, I, what I'm assuming is more fighting stance hands of some kind. Shush. And then another grip right hand. And there's a grip hand because of this rope that hangs over her shoulder. There's a handle on one side and then a blade of some kind on the other. Over her head. And then in promotional images, Hasbro had ripping like that. And that totally works, but I'd also like to see the rope extended. And for those of you who noticed, I swapped the hand. <laughs> I had the right hand and the left arm. Shaoling stands at five and seven eighths inches tall, which is pretty perfect with other Marvel Legends MCU characters like Black Widow and Shuri. Next up, let's take a look at Death Dealer. It also looks like gets in the way of some movement here. But some movie designs are just like that. Some things are just not meant to be translated into action figure form, at least action-y action figure form, because I'll take any and all characters in action figure form. It's just getting them to perform those actions. Oh, but you know what? It's not hindered as much as I thought it would be. There is a slit up the side right here. So it does get out of the way of leg movement. And in fact, they painted the inside of that. And at first you think, oh man, that looks a lot like what I saw in the trailer with all this new detail and very ornate, intricate stuff going on. And then you look at the legs. You don't catch it at first because of the colors. It helps blend in with the rest of the body. Then you realize that is uh, Ant-Man's legs. It's a lot more apparent on Ant-Man because of the silver and the red and the black. Whereas over here, it's painted all blue. It just looks like seam lines in the pants. But then the knee pad, that basketball pattern on the front of the boots, same feet. And even though this is sealed around it, I think you can pull it here, but it's glued down. Right here at the top, you can see the same detail on the chest and even the same neck. There's rings going around it. These are painted. It jumps out at you. It makes it look slightly different, but it's the same. But I don't even mind because it's hidden under all this new stuff. If it works, it works, you know? The silver on the knee pads tie up to the new forearms with this armor piece on the back, the nice sculpting to it. The hands have these plates on the back and then new upper arms that match the pattern of this quilted overlay. And then the ties going around are painted red to these added pieces that look like they dangle down. Soft, move around, get out of the way. I like this goldish yellow cutting through the blue. It just changes things up a bit. But then you get to the belt, very nice sculpted detail on the buckle, these two metal pieces on the sides. Comes around to the back, and I actually thought these 
blades came out of here. These are actually a sculpted part of this, but they look very nice. There's also this design painted on the outside of the boots. I'm not sure what that is. Again, it's nicely done, but it's the head that catches your eye. The blues, it brings this design. Well, it's not the same rectangles up to here, but it feels like the same design. Ponytail sticking out the top, softer material. It's the mask or the face paint or whatever that really catches your eye in this whole design. It's just very, very striking. And well done with the reds, the blacks, the eyes peering out from under that. Like I mentioned, it is split on this side to get out of the way of at least the left leg, but it does kill any ab crunch or twist or turn or anything under there. Maybe a little bit, but it's not worth the trouble. Hinge at the neck going up to a ball joint in the head. It can look up, looks down. That's where the hinge has the advantage over the dumbbell joint. You can bury the chin, but you don't get, well, that, that tilt's not bad. Swivel, shoulder hinges past 90, rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep, Double elbow comes, oh yeah, that's not bad at all. Swivel, hinge. We know there is torso articulation, but it's it's hindered all coming out to the hip comes forward back out swivel at the thigh peeking through right there oh it is going to get in the way of the knee though bend it around with it bing hinge at the ankle goes eh, not as far as the rest of them but not bad also goes forward forward facing pin for rocker for accessories out of the package death dealer has these big splayed out hands then he comes with a left hand that's already gripping a dagger there's no loose daggers here that's what i'm just realizing there's two sculpted into the back. There's one sculpted into the left hand. Then there's two blades on this side attached by an effect piece to a splayed out hand to simulate throwing. If it came down to it, snip, snip, cut them right there. You have two blades. Death Dealer stands at six and five sixteenths to the top of his head, which works out really well with MCU characters, well, movie characters like Domino and Deadpool. And don't worry, I'm going to do a big comparison once I open up all the movie figures. And then to finish out the regular wave, there is Shang-Chi himself. <laughs> I'm already noticing it right off the bat. Why doesn't he have any fists? Oh, cellophane, get out there. And again, getting it out of the package, I like this overall design. It's, it reminds me of, was this the more modern design in the comic? At some point, I feel like Shang-Chi wore this or some variation of this. This MCU translation, it totally works for me. Again, just some fairly plain black pants, wrinkles coming down. It goes tighter again around the ankle down to the shoes. I like the white sole sticking out. It's a nice contrast. Laces to give the shoes some detail. Sleeves rolled up again. That seems to be a trend in this wave too, but then you get to the basketball texture and the very nice paintwork. I can see that it's slightly off the sculpt right there, but again, very, very intricate for Hasbro factory work. It took me a minute to realize there's a darker red in places, like right here, then there's the brighter red in the middle poking through. Or is it my eyes messing with me because of the black lines running through it? Around on the back, more seams, more texture, just all kinds of stuff going on here. On what is essentially just a red shirt, some black lines, but it works really well. And then again with the head, the skin tone is slightly shiny in my bright lights, but not as bad as some Star Wars figures we've seen lately. Black hair, the sculpt work, it's shorter on the sides, gets longer on the top a bit, comes around the photo reel for the eyes, the eyebrows, the lips. Again, just a fantastic job at the Hasbro factories. One thing I did notice in the promo pictures we got last week, and I still don't like it now that I have the plastic in hand, is this cut across the waist. It's an overlay. I feel like that could have been attached to that somehow, or one piece overlay coming down. I'm sure there's reasons it went this way, but Going over articulation, I feel like Hasbro is really getting a grip on this dumbbell. I, the more I mess with these compared to some of the older ones, this is import quality. I'm really liking this. Shoulder hinges up, rotates all the way around, swivel at the bicep, double elbow comes again all the way up. Swivel, hinge, ab crunch comes forward, very nice. I think he wins the whole wave. Arcs back, swivel at the waist, goes all the way around. Ball coming out to the hip goes all the way forward, back, out. I don't know if it's this pushing down on it or if that's full range right there. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh yeah, there's no problem. Bam, 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 bam. Kind of hunky chunky. Hinge at the ankle. Oh, again, all the way back. Goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories in the package, there's two grip hands. Again, what I'm assuming is two fighting stance hands of some kind. And then there's two open clawed hands. Well, let's see, does Win Woo's hand go in there? Yeah, it pops right in. But the skin tone is just slightly off. Then there is this staff. It's very, very smooth in the middle, but the two ends 
has some intricate detail to it that totally works but again striking hands would have been cool shang chi stands at six and a quarter inches tall to the top of his hair and again the head size is slightly larger than older mcu figures but i also feel that's more realistic but here he is with black widow and in-game captain america then let's build the build a figure mr hyde doesn't make sense in this wave but i'm not going to complain because i wanted a mr hyde twist the leg it shouldn't be this difficult to get on there <laughs> i'd much rather do arms somebody else do legs for me oh of course you're not gonna go on without getting behind and it's a cool mr hyde but i feel like it's a modern rendition of some kind that i'm not as familiar with the mr hyde i always picture has the crazy hair sticking out kind of a top cloak thing to his coat i'm sure there's a name for it it's a fancy jacket of some kind i don't know fancy jackets here this almost feels like the uh you know the sean connery league of extraordinary gentlemen mr hyde but at the same time i'm very happy to be getting a mr hyde for the shelf first off it uses a lot of parts from the fix it build a figure same arms same legs same feet with the details on the shoe it's the same undershirt but instead of making the collar and tie a separate piece it's pegged in somehow and glued down or something but that's okay that's not moving around it's a nice bow tie but then Hyde's jacket's different too with the big collar going up and around and then the vest being a part of it underneath and then of course different hands different head and as far as those go it's kind of beasty the fingernails are roughed up and it has some grooves to it and they're a bit broken there's a wart or two bumps sticking out and then hair sculpted on the back with a darker brown paint on top it's just kind of blown on there but the effect works that's a grip hand the other hand is splayed out you can see the inside just rough looking up at the head with the gritted teeth the pink gum showing the chops the longer hair up under the bowler hat the big thing though are those big bulging bloodshot eyes there's a metallic is that green to the eye which matches the rest of the suit that's why he wears the suit like that it accentuates his eye color it matches but then the red around him and kind of bleeding out just makes him look wild 20 teeth on that yeah i didn't even notice that till just now in fact are the teeth an inlaid piece oh yeah it is i didn't even realize that when i popped the head on that's cool get some paint on there pop it in the back it's nice and clean yeah yeah it's just a, a big bulky guy in a suit fancy meeting you here <laughs> there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck can look up and looks down oh look at the tilt swivel hinge at the shoulder comes up to about right there goes all the way around hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to 90 and then swivels in and out swivel at the wrist hinge there is an ab crunch but you kind of have to work it under the jacket ball coming out to the hip goes forward goes back goes out swivel at the thigh single knee goes up eh, not quite 90. hinge at the ankle goes hardly back at all forward and then a little forward facing pin for rocker cuff comes down over the shoe it gets in the way for accessories he comes with his big old cane you can see that he's used it for something that dings and dents it up around on the grip up here too but that's a kind of a coppery brown color and then black for the rest and then with that you just boop goes in the hand <laughs> getting the camera set up he looks like a big angry leprechaun but not joking about it he does cut a mean silhouette he looks angry well he's supposed to look angry but he's about to rip you a new one Hyde stands at about eight and a quarter inches tall to the top of his hat which is a good size compared to your standard Marvel Legends figures like Captain America Iron Man but can still go toe to toe with your big boys like Hulk and Wendigo or Wendigo if you're nasty but that's not all like I said we're gonna take a look at the Target exclusive Katie I caught it on the target app this morning for store pickup i got the email a couple hours later i went to pick it up not a damn marvel legends figure on the shelf or on the pegs i guess another fine addition to the cast we've already built with the rest of the wave but a little bit more stiff in the action figure department only because of the design which i guess is in line with some of the other figures but yeah you know where i'm going with this again the design of the dress doesn't quite match any of the other things we saw the quilted look of death dealer or the rectangles the basketball texture but i like it it's something unique again they try to spice things up again for the big screen 
Same for the action figures. And the way the dress drapes is very natural. It is a hard plastic, but it does split up this side. And there you can see that she actually has a pants sculpt underneath coming down to a cuff right above the ankle, which works perfectly because it gives you another point of articulation before you hit the ankle. Down at the feet, there's a sandal look, the straps coming across the foot. The sleeves also stop above the wrist. It doesn't give it any extra articulation, but it's a nice look. Usually we'd see the sleeve just hit the hand. Here, it's raised up just a little bit so it doesn't get in the way. The belt is also a separate piece that floats between the skirt piece and the torso piece. It acts like a buffer while allowing articulation to move. But then that's also my favorite part because of these tampoed flowers going around it and then up the collar of the top of the dress. Even around the back, under the hair. They didn't have to do that, but they did. And then the flowers come around the back of the belt piece too. And at first I thought, man, they really missed with the paint, but it's actually sculpted that way. It does a kick down. It's weird, but it feels very natural. And then up at the head, just like the rest of the wave. And again, we're going to get to that big comparison at the end, but the likeness here is fantastic. A little shine, get it out of the light. It looks really, really good. The hair sculpt coming down, there is this strand kind of straying away. It's a rubbery material. It's not going to get in the way. The photo reel, eyebrows, eyes, lips. <laughs> I feel like I've said that four or five times during this review, but again, there's no better way to describe it. It's just on point. Again, it's split on this side, but it's not split on the other. I, I don't know if that's part of the design, but it doesn't help in the articulation department when you're trying to move the left leg. Traffic cone. Another thing to watch out for that I should have mentioned with Shaoling, I guess, the hinge and swivel elbows, those can get backwards. And that's fairly obvious. You can see it kicking forward and it's not going to give you as much range. Articulation, what's going on up here? Another dumbbell joint, but really sunk into the neck. But even then, and the hair hanging down, I can look up slightly. Looks down. Tilt. Hinge at the shoulder goes up past 90. Rotates all the way around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow. Not as far as Shaoling, but past 90. Swivel at the wrist. Hinge in and out. Dumbbell joint at the torso. Again, the belt hides all that. Gets good hula hoop. The split side, you can get the leg up to there. I've seen somebody take this skirt off and it does look good, but it leaves it gap out to about right there. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Bing. Swivel at the pants cuff. Hinge at the ankle oh look at that all the way back forward oh shit she wins the whole way forward facing pin for rocker for accessories she has these grip hands and she has some fighting fist action comes with this bow fairly simple has the white grip has the white string on it but it doesn't really draw back it's rubbery but you don't want to go pulling well, actually that's not bad you get one arrow has red feathers on the end a red tip and then there's also a bunch of arrows well i say bunch there's three arrows sculpted together. Then there's the quiver. It has this rubber plastic piece for a strap. You can see a little detail on the back side. Arrows go here. Then on this side, I like that silver. It brings a whole new color into the overall color scheme and it just works. I gotta think that it goes on like this. Any other way, it just doesn't sit right. I'm not quite sure. That's where it lays the most natural. But there you can put the arrows here and the bow right here. You got to kind of squeeze it through. Fits right in that notch right there. There's also spaces between the fingers. Well, at least pointer and pinky. And on the package, she's shown as being right-handed. So the bow goes in the left. Not perfect, but not bad. And then finally for her accessories, there is this thing. Since Baby Groot We've had to have some kind of a cute, cuddly character show up in different corners of the universe. And I guess Morris is that. And I only know that name because it's on the Lego set. It's furry here, has a tuft of hair up on top. There's these feathery wings, four of them. It's a gray that matches the hair on top. It travels down the back a little bit. You look underneath and there are these cool metallic turquoise and purple colors. It's a little messy. It's a little rough, but it adds so much to something that's going to sit on the shelf and you're going to look down at it most of the time. So I wish that was on the other side, but that may be the design of the movie. I don't know. And now that I'm looking, there's actually six legs. The back end is sitting down. Katie stands at about five and three quarter inches tall, while Morris, at least sitting down, measures about one and three quarter inches tall. And again, she fits right in with other MCU characters. Black Widow, Shuri. Okay, guys, it's comparison time. Pixel Dan said I could do that one time, and this is that one time. <laughs> he did a play day, I get to do a comparison time. And looking at the Shang-Chi movie figures, this works perfectly. The size differences, the statures, there's a matching aesthetic throughout all the figures, the fantastic photo reels and likenesses. So at the end of the day, an interesting wave. And if you're into the movie, there's a little something for you 
if you're into the comics, <laughs> there's a little something for you. Again, bringing it all the way back around, it's, it's an odd mix. I can't figure out the connection between Iron Man, Civil Warrior, Mr. Hyde, and the Shang-Chi movie. <laughs> but again, the simplest of reuses. Tony did get a new head, Mr. Hyde got new parts, Civil Warrior got a new shield, but the movie figures are pretty much all new sculpt, except for the body on Death Dealer. Again, it's just odd. And I always go back to people who only buy comic book figures, having to buy these movie figures to get their comic book Build-A-Figure, or the only, well, I guess the movie collectors, they get their movie figures and they just get rid of the Mr. Hyde parts. I don't know. Me, I just like toys. <laughs> Give me anything to play with. Again, the likenesses on the movie characters, fan damn -tastic. I have a feeling once the movie hits or the hype gets a rolling heavier, Mm, yeah. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And now I have a ton of hands laying around. I still don't know why Shang-Chi didn't come with fists. But now that I look more and more, Win Wu's fists aren't as off as I thought they were. They're pretty damn close. You can see the difference but it may be good enough to give Shang-Chi his fists.